Okay, as promised in my goals update stats video from a couple weeks ago, here are the updated books that I need to read before the end of 2022. And I don't know how many books are on here. I started by, um, here's my Reddit bingo board so far. I looked at the squares I haven't filled in. And I went through what I originally planned and then decided what I wanted to change because I also wanted to make sure, well, not make sure, but I noticed with my stats that I wasn't reading as many trans or non-binary or male authors. So I was like trying to pick books for certain slots where I could like make sure I was putting those authors in, prioritizing them, finding books that I already wanted to read by those authors and just reminding myself, hey, put this on your radar, that sort of thing. I also went through my Kindle to look at like any Kindle books I've purchased that I just keep forgetting exists. I feel like we all know this. Kindle is this black hole where all your purchases go to be forgotten. And so I have a list of that. And then I have a list of like my new release anticipations, like not my like, oh, I'm interested in that as like someone who consumes new things. Like, no, these are like favorite authors. I am so hyped for these releases, releases. So that's like kind of what I have for this list. So starting with the bingo board, I still need to read the Vila, which is going to be for two or more authors. So because it has like four authors, I need set in space. And this one's Chilling Effect by Valerie Valdez. I have been very interested in this and I think it's a trilogy and I think the third book just came out. All I know is that a lot of people recommend it to me when I am like, hey, I want more Latin A authors. Also, there's cats on the covers and it's in space. Like a lot of that is like could be perfect for me, truly. So I'm, I'm really excited. I don't know anything else about it. And I don't actually even know if it technically works for the hard mode of set in space, but people who are not from Earth sort of thing. And I'll find out. And if it doesn't work, I'll pick a different space book. It's fine. I really want to read this one. Um, Antihero in the hard mode is young adult. I still want to read Iron Widow. Haven't done that yet. I switched out the book club prompt on the bingo board to graphic novel. And so that's Far Sector, which I am in the middle of right now, so should easily have done. Cool Weapon is still the bane of my existence in terms of finding a book that I want to read for that. I think originally I had some books listed, but I don't really want to read either of them. And so I switched it up to the Morgane Saga by CJ Cherry. And I don't know, this is supposed to be like a sci fantasy, like it's sword and sorcery meets like high tech sci fi or something. That alone is enough to make me want to try the first book. And I think when I looked at the subreddit, that was like recommendations for this, someone put it there and that's how I found it. So if anyone's read this, let me know. Is it have a cool magical weapon with a name that is held by the protagonist? Like this is such a specific prompt. This is so hard for me. Uh, next up we have Set in Africa. I want to read Son of the Storm. This has been on my radar and I think if I read it by the end of this year, I think the sequel will be coming out next year. So that'll be like pretty good timing. Um, features mental health. I want to read my first CL Polk for this. I want to read Witchmark which was on the recommendations. Um, someone can correct me if it doesn't include mental health, but I want to read a CL Polk. So it's a thing that I want to do. So that's why I wanted to put them on this list. Um, Urban Fantasy I still have is No Gods, No Monsters by Cadwell Turnbull. I don't know what that's about. It's just a lot of people were talking about it when we were all setting up our bingo boards. So I'm just I'm curious about it. Uh, Non-Human Protagonist. I think Symiosis will work for this by um, Sue Burke. I, it's just the struggle of non-humanoid, non-human protagonists is hard for me because a lot of people were recommending the Martha Wells fantasy series, which I am interested in. But when I look at the cover art, I'm like, is that non-humanoid just because he has wings? Like, I don't really know. So I think Symiosis, though, is meant to be more like Children of Time, where it's like the aliens are like truly alien. Like, they're, it's not like humans. Um, Self-published, I have Half a Lion, which is a book that I purchased. So this is one of the ones that is on my Kindle already. Would like to read. I bought it. <laughs> um, award finalist, and I think the hardware mode was like not for the Hugo or Nebula or something. And so Brown Girl in the Ring is still what I had last time and what I have now because I have it on the shelf, like right up here. I want to read more Nayla Hopkinson this year, specifically that one. So that's what's happening. Uh, the next one is BIPOC author and the hard mode is indigenous author. And so I have Mongrels by Stephen Graham Jones. Cause again, kind of, it's, it's also right there behind me. <laughs> and I mean, I think this one has werewolves. So I think it counts. I mean, I know technically he te does horror and not sci-fi fantasy, but I consider this bingo a speculative bingo. So I'm going with it. And then no if, ands, or buts is Light from Uncommon Stars, which I want to read for the Hugo nominated novels anyway. So that's an update what I have left for this bingo board, which technically I have till April of the following year, but I also am just like, would love to have these done in 2022. My, I want to read these new releases, these anticipated releases. 
I am so excited. One just came out or is about to be out, and that is the new Sarah Gailey, Just Like Home. I think, based off the Echo Wife, Sarah Gailey can be the author for me for the more creepy space. I didn't really love Upright Woman Wanted, and I haven't read Magic for Liars, but I adore Echo Wife. I think it's, it's right here. Um, and I don't normally read domestic thrillers or things like that, and I loved that. So I'm hoping this, like, unsettling horror will work really well for me. I haven't looked much into it. I just know it's by Sarah Gailey, and it looks awesome. Uh, the Only Under Sword, which is the sequel to The Jasmine Throne, which you can also see on my shelf. And a highly anticipated sequel. Epic things happened at the end of The Jasmine Throne. I must know what happens next. <laughs> and I think part of the struggle for this is I'll want to reread The Jasmine Throne first, so timing that, but I'm just gonna buy The Only Under Sword once it's out. Like, I'm just gonna go to the bookstore and pick up my copy and then figure out how to rearrange my shelf so it fits, because that is... That's what it is to be a book owner, is figuring out how to fit things on your shelves. Next one is The Spear Cuts Through Water by Simone Jimenez. Again, on the shelf, you can see another book by him. I need to read more of this man's work. Oh my god, The Vanished Birds is still one of the most impactful reads of 2022 for me, and I just want to see what they do with fantasy. I just gotta know. I gotta know. I mean, Evie, who loved The Vanished Birds, already gave it five stars, so like my expectations are pretty high. I'm really hoping it delivers. <laughs> And the last two are unsurprising. I already mentioned them in my mid-year freakout tag. We got the new Jemison, The World We Make. I cannot remember that title to save my life. I have it written down. Um, I'm excited for that. And then we have the new Sanderson, The Lost Metal. I have a Mistborn Era 2 read-along happening. I am so excited to reread Mistborn Era 2 in anticipation of this book. I'm just, I'm really excited. Because I think last year we had Cytonic, which I haven't read. So this is like since Stormlight, my first new Sanderson. And I'm very excited. So those are like my anticipated, anticipated releases. Like my anticipated releases, if I was not on booktube, would be those books, if that makes sense. Because um, I didn't, didn't really want to make like a second half of the year, all of the books that I might want to review and stuff. I feel like now that I do my recent release videos, I approach new releases very differently. Um, and now things that are on my Kindle that I would like to maybe occasionally remember that are on my Kindle. We have The Bladed Faith by David Dal Daglish. Dalglish. I'm sorry about the pronunciation of that name. This has been reviewed by a bunch of people um, and, that, and people have been really enjoying it. And it's a seasoned fantasy author. And I bought it when it was on sale for like a dollar or two. And I want to try it out. And I think it's vigilante fantasy, which like I think is a trope I like. I know one day I should make the video of tropes I like in fantasy or something. I just, I truly don't think I think about it until I realize, oh yeah, I love this book because it has X thing. So one day, maybe I'll do some like self-discovery <laughs> and figure out what tropes I really like. I have this other one, Blackstone Heart. I don't know a lot about this. I think it's indie published and it was on sale and it was on maybe an SF PO sort of thing. So I was curious. I could be wrong. This could be traditionally published. I saw it on some lists and at the time I was interested and the cover was pretty and it was 99 cents. So I got it. I still want to read China Mountain Zhang, which actually is not on my Kindle. I just was looking and I saw old library books I never got to read. Um, and this is a novella that was recommended to me by Rachel from Kalinati. And I really value her recommendations. And this is like a small sci-fi novella that I still like really want to try out. The Lost War. Um, this is a, a winner of the Indie Prize, I think, last year. I don't know. This cover is probably recognizable to you if you've been in the indie circles. I'm just curious about it. A lot of people gave it good reviews. It's on my Kindle. <laughs> Similarly, Winds of Strife, another indie pub on my Kindle. And I've been wanting to prioritize more indie books, so I should read the ones that I already purchased and then get better at discovering more. And I have plenty of friends who review indie books. I'm just not as good at prioritizing them. This next one's not an indie, but it's one I really want to read, especially because I think it's about Cleveland or East Cleveland, and that's Black Girl Unlimited by Echo Brown. I think this is more fabulism, less than fantasy, and it might be YA or new adult and not adult, but I don't care. I really want to read it. I know it's um, very close to being autobiographical, and like I said, I think it's based in Ohio. I really want to read it. And then these next two are not on my Kindle, but I, like I said, I saw the library holds. And I was like, oh, I never did get around to reading that. I would still like to read that book. <laughs> and that's Far From the Light of Heaven by Tade Thompson and Magic for Liars by Sarah Gailey, both of which are books that I am curious about. Um, Tad Thompson, because him as a sci-fi author, I'm very intrigued by. And this is, I think, a standalone. So and that this one could also maybe work for Set in Space for the bingo board. And then Magic for Liars, it's a sibling relationship, which is a buzzword for me. And I just... Ever since The Echo Wife, I'm like, what if it could happen again? What if I love another book this month? Which is like, 
it's a trap. It's always a trap, but I, I, I never stop searching. But again, it has this hand. And I really, really don't like hands on my books. I don't know why. But it's a creepy hand. So I think that also keeps putting me off. And they never have like the hardback at my bookstore. They always have the paperback with the inset. Which at least the inset's like a cool color accent. Like I don't actually hate how it looks. I just don't like books with insets. So that's the general books I'd love to read by the end of the year. This does not include series that I want to continue or start. I have different videos for those. Um, and it doesn't really include any of books that help me towards my goals, like short story collections or middle grade or graphic novels, you know. But in general, these are standalone books that have been on my want to read shelf that I would like to get off that shelf and into my hands and remind myself exist when I formulate my monthly TBRs. So what books do you want to read before the end of the year? What are your like anticipated releases? I know a lot of people have Babel on their list. That is one I want to read, but it's also, but it's not one that I'm about to go spend my money at the bookstore for, you know, like I'm, I'm really excited to try it out. I can get it from the library and stuff like that. See what I think, especially because it might be the dark academia that I've been wanting ever since I've read Vida Nostra. It could be. But that's it for this one. If you want to leave an emoji, I guess leave a hand. Leave the cross finger hand, because that's like think what the cover for Magic for Liars is. And I, I know there's a cross finger emoji, so I know that that exists. And otherwise, like if you liked it, subscribe if you want to, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.